Hey sis, welcome back to Money Making Mondays. Now, today on Money Making Mondays, we are gonna do something a little bit differently. Normally, we have some type of topic on how you can make extra money outside of your nine to five. But today, we are gonna do a get ready with me. I have a lot of content to film since we are on our way out the door to go on our spring vacation. And last month alone, we gained over 9,000 new subscribers. So I think it's about time that we do another get ready with me. Who are you? What do you really do? Do you have a job? What are you doing your spare time? How many kids you got? And just have an all on chit chat. Now, if you follow me on Instagram at by Crystal Williams, you know that I did a Q&A and you guys left me tons of questions. I also left the same Q&A inside of our community tab here on YouTube. So I'm just gonna pull some questions at random. I'll answer them as I'm simultaneously doing my makeup. Now, I will tell you this now. I am not an MUA. That is not my job. I coach y'all. That's what I do. That is my job at this point, okay? I don't do makeup. So what you're gonna see on my face <laughs> is what I do pretty much whenever I do wear makeup. Is it MUA status? No, no it's not baby girl. Don't judge me, do not judge me, okay? But it's what I do. Respect my none makeup skills. Thank you, thank you in advance. Okay, so let's get started. First thing first, my face is super dry so I am gonna moisturize it. I have this handheld mister just so I can moisturize and get it a little saturated before we start. So the first question that we're gonna do here is, I've been following since 2018, I love seeing your growth. So that's not an actual question, but I just wanna say thank you, I guess. That is very nice. Thank you for following for so long. Oh, I think, I, I think my mister, did it go out? Okay. <laughs> you do have the charges. I'm like, oh, maybe it's not charged. Thank you for following for so long. That means you saw so many of my evolutions. That means you saw the start of Manny's Mom Fitness, which was my first Instagram and e-com store that I started. Cause I started, I started building it in 2017 and I went all in um, by 2019. So, wow, you saw that. You saw my private Facebook group for Manny's Mom. You saw me meet my husband, get married. Wow. So thank you so much for following. Thank you for your support. I appreciate it. And I hope that you continue on this journey because there's so much more to me now that I, or should I say there's so much more that I have to accomplish and become. And I hope that you continue to st stay on the journey with us. So next question is, do you think you will ever go back to having a job? Okay, this is a great question. Okay, I think I'm pretty saturated. So I will say this. Um, going in with my retinol, I usually use it at night, but I did not do it last night, so I'm gonna do it during the day. Um, so I will say, I've considered it, especially last year when I had my, um, my one-on-one clients, honestly, one-on-one clients to me really made me feel like I had a job. Of course, having the one-on-one clients, I still had my um, own schedule. I have to remember not to hit this mic. I'm sorry if I'm messing up the audio, guys. Um, having the one-on-one clients, I really felt like I was an employee, right? Um, because one of my clients had me build out my own department. I was a creative director. And so it was a real heavy position, um, heavy in regards to the workload, very serious, very managerial up there. I had my own team, people reported to me. It was a lot of responsibility. Um, and it felt like a job. So that did make me consider, like, could I go back? Going in with vitamin C and E. And I'll link all this guys in case you guys want to try it out. Um, and so that was nice. It had me thinking about going back to become an employee. But what I had to remember was what I was experiencing as a consultant, right? For this agency is that I was still setting my own schedule. 
And so I have no problem with going back to a job. I think what it is for me is I like to truly work on my own. And so the idea of having to adhere to a company schedule is the part that I don't like. I like knowing that if my son needs me, I can just get up and go. If my husband can't do something, I can just stop what I'm doing and go get it handled, right? Like, I love that flexibility. And I know there's a lot of jobs um, that give flexibility, but I've never seen one that flexible. And maybe it's because I would have to be high up. And then when I think about that, like, okay, what if I just get a higher position? I think about how much work comes with those higher positions. And so then it's like, ugh, I don't feel like any amount of money is going to make me feel like it's worth the flexibility because of how much work is attached to it. I don't like to work hard, I'm not gonna lie to you. I did it for so many years. I'm finally at that point in my life where it's like, I'm tired. I am tired and I want to be a wife, a mother, and I want to still work. I love being creative, but I don't want to have to break my back. Like I've been breaking it since I was 15. I'm going to go in with this moisturizer. This is the super goop moisturizer here. You probably can't even see that. This is the triple prep. It has some SPF in it. So that's what I, I wanted to try it out. This is my first time trying this moisturizer. So we're going to see. I have my mirror behind you guys if it gives me a cast. Okay, it's not too bad. That's so cool. Okay. Okay. So I don't know. As of right now, it's a no for me unless I can find a job. Now I did see that they're talking about doing the four day, is it four day? Yeah, the four day work week. That's enticing. So the idea of being able to only work four days and if it was remote and I could pick my own days, that would be great. That would be great. Yeah, I think that would be great. But honestly, I might as well just stay a consultant at that point. To me, being a consultant was just as equivalent to being a having a job. So um, that probably would be the closest thing unless I have to go back to work. Now, if I ever have to have to go back to work, uh, like my family needs it, I will go in a heartbeat. I would that's not an issue but as of right now i don't think so okay so i am trying something new today guys so i'm not sure if you guys saw this um this is the super goop tinted um sunscreen so i purchased this online because somebody on one of y'all little influencers on tiktok got to me and i purchased it now i did purchase a 46 in that was the color i post that was the color i purchase because one of the girl who was recommending it was I thought she was my skin color that 46 in came and it wasn't it wasn't so now I'm going I took it back and I'm going in with a 40 W as my color so just wanted to note that in case someone gets it because they're like oh we're similar skin colors I did that and the 46 in did not work for me so here we go I'm gonna put it on with my fingers since technically it's a sunscreen. So let's see. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Now, the reason why I got this one, guys, is because we're gonna be going on vacation. And I'm like, I don't wanna wear a full face of makeup, but I would like to have a little coverage and then when I reapply, because we're going to be out in the sun, I want to make sure I'm not just moving around tons of makeup. So the idea that I can apply this and reapply it. Oh, okay. It's not too casty. I thought it might be casty. It's not. Okay. Okay, super cute. I think it's coming off Cassie on camera though. But in real life, I promise you it's not. <laughs> okay. Little, okay. Okay. They might have did something with this tinted uh, sunscreen. Um, I can't tell you that it, it goes on like a nice butter. Like, wow. Better than what I thought. 
okay. For sunscreen, I am liking it. I'm liking it a lot. Okay, next question here. How can I learn to make better videos? Great question. Everything just went everywhere. Um, I will say this, if you're struggling to make better videos or have good videos overall, I'm gonna first have to do a shameless plug and say I would recommend that you purchase my five hour UGC webinar. So I am a UGC creator. Going to go in with this Forever Glowville Dior. Um, this is my primer. So I'm a UGC creator, started in UGC, came from UGC. And I think I should have put, I think I should have put this one on first. I'm so used to putting my sunscreen on and then putting this on, but because it's tinted, I feel like I should have. I don't know. Huh. Um, we'll see how the makeup comes out. Um, so I'm a UGC creator, right? And I create content for brands. The reason why I do so well with TikTok shop is because I come from UGC. I'm a UGC creator. I literally just create videos and then I sell it to the brand. TikTok shop is pretty much the same thing. You're not selling it to the brand, but you're just making videos for a product for the brand. That's what TikTok shop is. The reason why I'm so good at it is because I come from UGC. If you could master UGC, you can master TikTok shop and my five hour UGC webinar covers everything you need for UGC, which is, which is literally just TikTok shop, um, or at least the creation of videos. Because one of the things that's going to make you have a good video is a video that actually converts into sales, right? You know, there's people that have videos, right? And they look amazing but they have very little sales. If you were on my last live, I talked about the video where I showed the net camera and how it had, I think 14,000 views, but it only sold five of the net cameras for TikTok shop. And it talked about how it's a great video. It's very engaging. People liked it. Obviously it has 14,000 views, but it wasn't good enough to actually convert into a sale. So when you say, how can you make better videos? To me, when you say better, you're talking about videos that not only look good and are edited good, but they actually convert into sales because looks and editing can be make a beautiful video, but it doesn't mean that it's good if your end result is more sales. So if you're trying to get more sales on your videos, I'm going to have to recommend that five hour webinar. It walks you through how to do your research on a brand, how to write a script. The things that you guys see me say and do in these videos, I mentally write out what I'm going to say. For TikTok shop, I don't have to write out much, but I can tell you some of my videos that I've done amazing had an actual script, at least the hook portion for sure the body and at least the call to action, which is the end part. And so for me to be able to do that, it's a skill that I picked up being a UGC creator. And so that is what the webinar teaches you. It teaches you how to do your research on a brand. When I say research, I'm talking about internal and external research. So looking at how does the brand show up online on their Instagram? How do they show up on Twitter? What are the things they talk about? What is the tone that they take with their consumers? How do they respond to comments if they even respond to them? And then when I say external research, how do they show up in publications? What are some of the reviews out there in the world? What are some of the comments? What, is, what are people saying on Reddit about it? These are the things that I take into account before creating these scripts. So now if I find a trending comment or topic on Reddit, that's like got a lot of views and a lot of engagement, maybe I'll base my video around that type of comment because that's obviously what the socials are saying about it. And this might get more engagement. Those are the tactics and strategies that I use when creating these videos. And that's what my five hour UGC webinar teaches. It also covers 
um, some editing, not really in depth, but definitely good enough, like green screens and so forth. So it teaches you how to edit. We go heavy into hooks because that is so important if you want to have better videos. If you don't have a good hook, trust me when I tell you, no one's going to stop and watch. Oh my God, the sun is just moving on me. Like, do you not see me doing my makeup? That's why, I'm going to be honest, we pay all this money out here in California for this sun. And if she wants to be picky on when she wants to show up, like, you don't have a right to not be here. Like, we pay too much money for you. You need to show up to work every single day. You don't get no days off, no PTO, no four, no four day work week for you. That's how I feel. Well, how much my rent is, you should be present right now in this video so I can get these eyebrows, girl. Okay, anyways, I digress. But if you're trying to have a better video, I would recommend the five hour webinar. That would be my first recommendation. The next is going to be practice. Practice makes perfect. You're never gonna get better at something if you don't practice. And you're probably like, well, Crystal, how can I practice? Look at inspirational videos. For every product on TikTok Shock, they have videos that already went viral. Try to recreate those. Don't recreate them and post them. Try to see if you can recreate what they did, the angle, the spins, the editing, so that you can actually practice against theirs. If that was helpful, let me know. Any comments about anything I said, drop it below. Okay, next one is do the, <laughs> this one is funny. This one is actually funny. Do the products from TikTok shop really work? Like, do you actually use them? Well, I guess since we're doing makeup, um, TikTok shop, mascara. So I'm not gonna lie to you. When I got this, I didn't know if it'll work and it actually did work. I really like it. I actually replaced it with my other mascara. Um, so yes, I do use them. Um, do I use all them though? Let me, let me think, cause I don't want to lie to you. I use the mouthwash. Like I'm almost out of Guru Nanda. I love it. Um, I use the neck camera. What else? I use, I'm using the desk right now for my products, my mobile desk. And this is not, I have two. I have the one that's mobile that gets around the house and the other one that is in my office. So I use that when we do our regular normal style videos. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything, my sheets, my pillowcase, the uh, mattress topper, use all of those. There was, um, there was one, it was a peptide. Some type of, it's called like P-Fix something. I don't know. I left a review on my on my backup page saying that it wasn't that great. So I will be the that I said that they lied. They said that it's a Botox replacement. It's not. It gives the appearance of less lines, but it's not. Um, I did comment on that and I never used it again after the video. I think that's probably the biggest thing. I'm gonna see if my husband knows. Babe, is there any product that you can think of that I've made a video for that I actually don't use? Yeah, I see, I use, I actually use the product. But then again, I try to make sure, I'm intentional. I try to make sure it's a product that I can actually use. You know, I'm not just gonna, like I have so many emails from people offering me to give me all types of stuff. Um, and from there they'll, you know, of course, give me commission and everything and I don't take it because I just don't like junk. I have a problem. Like I don't like stuff in my house. I like very minimalistic. Look at my background. It's just beige and plain with a little bit of gold and that's it, right? I like minimalistic and so the idea of having all that junk in my house, it's just no, it's a no for me. Um so I don't so, so I don't say yes to every product. Like I'm not sure if you guys remember when the um guys know what it is the 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 monitor no the digital photo frame oh lord they have a monitor too that's why i said monitor um the digital photo frame went viral around christmas time and i was pushing that heavy but i was pushing it as a green screen because we don't got that product and they offered to send it to me for free like a free um sample and i was like no thank you 
Now, we were gonna say yes because we were gonna give it to my mother-in-law for Christmas. We thought it would be a great gift for her. But once we did not do that, we were like, then we don't need it. Like, you know, I mean, I know Mother's Day will come up and give it to her then, but yeah, we didn't do it. So I said, no, thank you. Even the, um, I'm not sure if you guys remember the plaid coat. When I first promoted that and it went viral, I used the green screen. I didn't actually have it. Now I have it. I actually ended up um, grabbing it. Um, but before I did not, because if I don't need something, I'm not gonna grab it. I just don't like junk. I am. Because I'm the queen of getting rid of stuff. And the idea of having to reorganize and get rid of stuff just, uh. So yeah, no. Okay. Okay. Next question here. What's your favorite Amazon product lately? Oh. I love Amazon. Um, that's a good one. This is too thin. Look at this and look at this. Like, they're not even sisters. They can't even be cousins, like at this point. They are literally just in a foster home together, but they're not related. Really, like, Jesus. Um, this is hard. This is harder than what it is. I have a mirror here to help me so I can do this in front of you guys. And I'm struggling. Your girl has literally foster children for eyebrows. I'm gonna have to say my iPad holder. I've been using that a lot, more than what I thought I would use it. That will probably be one of the biggest ones. iPad holder. I like it because I can, it holds my iPad, it can swivel, it can lean down when I need to write. It's amazing for the iPad. So outside of the iPad holder, I am going to have to say, I, I would say my vitamin C and E serum. That's, I use it every day. That, that's it, I would say that. I have so many products though, guys, so it's kind of hard. Like, you don't understand. At this point, I, I should work for Amazon, which I do, but I really work for them, like an employee. Let me fix this eyebrow before we move on, or try to. Good lord. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Next one is, how did you know you had insulin resistance and high cortisol? That's a great question. So, I got tested. Now, I know most people are gonna say, I've seen the comments and I experienced the same thing. Your general practitioner will not test you for these things. They don't, they're not taught to look for those things. They're taught to treat type one, I'm sorry, they're taught to treat prediabetes. So my, um, my actual labs that came back were fine, like perfectly fine. There was no issues. Um, but so I went to a doctor that was um, an actual doctor, but she specialized in hormone therapy so she runs her own practitioner practice practice and at that practice she does a lot of hormone replacement so if you need testosterone and all those different things like or if you want ozempic semi-glutide all the different things that a med spa kind of can give you that's what she has there so she specializes in hormones and hormone therapy and so even though my numbers and my report came back perfectly fine she was able to tell me like, yeah, even though your numbers are fine, like I was not pre-diabetic whatsoever. She was like, but you have insulin resistance. And mind you, I went in because if you've been following me for a while, you know that I've always been fit. And then I would say within the last year, I gained almost like 60 pounds and I don't eat bad. Now, do I eat amazing? Like I'm, no, I'm not gonna lie to you, but it's not bad. And even when I don't eat bad, like I haven't, like I avoid fast food as much as possible. And even, and when I say fast food, I'm talking about like McDonald's and stuff like that. And even when I cut those things out, there was just still no weight loss. Like my body just doesn't move. It's just resistance to losing weight at this point. That's how I feel. Um, and so I knew something was wrong. I was always tired as well. Um, and I just look different. Um, I look completely different than when I looked last year or the year before and of course you would think okay well maybe it's the weight gain but i've gained weight before i was pregnant 
and this face that I currently have now looks like I'm pregnant like it's it reminds me of when I had a hormonal issue right pregnancy that's what it's giving like this this it's just not how I looked and so um I went in I was like you know what I want to test everything like everything I will pay you doesn't matter and so she ran the blood test everything came back fine but she was able to tell from the blood test like yeah even though everything looks fine in this report you have insulin resistance and then she did a math equation because my um is it progesterone or testosterone one of those and my estrogen she did a math equation and was like okay so based off of this i can tell that you have your estrogen dominant like these two numbers and when i say these two i want to say it's my estrogen and my progesterone but it might be my estrogen and my testosterone i don't know which one she was like they should be balanced like you should be similar in the same range the fact that my estrogen was so hot so much higher she was like your estrogen dominant which means you have excess estrogen and so um from there um she um looked at my cortisone levels cortisol levels and was like okay you have excess cortisol and so at that point she was like the thing is this we don't know if the cortisol is causing the insulin resistance which is then causing the estrogen dominance or it could be the estrogen dominance like just too much estrogen is causing the insulin resistance and if that's the case then the cortisol is causing the insulin res the cortisol is causing the estrogens which is causing the insulin resistance so that was something we kind of went back forth on like what's the root cause trying to get to that um because my diet isn't poor and so but it definitely could have it can definitely be better so she was like it could still be diet that's causing the insulin resistance but she was like, I don't think your diet is what's causing you to have the estrogen dominance. Definitely, I believe it's the cortisol. And so she was like, I'm going to bet that if you, we can fix your cortisol, that can fix your estrogen dominance and it can impact your insulin resistance. And so impact it in a, in a good way. And so since then, I just do so many different things to try to reverse it. Um, I started dry brushing with a copper brush um, from higher dose. I do liver um, packs where I wear castor oil on my liver to help process that because estrogen is processed through the liver. Um, I take so many different vitamins, iodine, selenium, electrolytes, omega-3s multivitamin prebiotic probiotic I mean just so many different things and I'm also um, going into the sauna I try to go in three times a week because one of the things she did tell me was that I don't poop enough so your girl was only pooping like three or four days a week or three or four times a week um, and she's like yeah, it has to be every day um, so one of the reasons why she's like, possibly the liver is not processing all the estrogen. Like I'm not getting rid of the toxins in my body. So she's like, for you to be as, I'm going to use the words big as big. She didn't say that though. As big as you are, you know, it's mostly inflammation and just swollen. That's, and that's how I look. I look like I'm swollen, like how I looked when I was pregnant. And so one of the things she told me is that my body is just not excreting enough of the toxins and the toxins leave your body through your liver through your sweat you know through your lymph nodes your lymph nodes is your your or your lymphatic drainage system is your sewage system but mine is backed up and so the sauna helps with me sweating because i wasn't even sweating and now i am pooping daily because i do also take magnesium at night which helps me to poop the next day as well as sleep and so forth so I know there was a lot of TMI, but that's how I found out. And those are the things that I'm doing to try to reverse it. I've been on this journey since January the 10th or 9th. I got diagnosed in December and um, I'm down close to 10 pounds. 
close to seven pounds. I'm like, I don't wanna lie to you, close to seven pounds. So it's a very slow progress. I can definitely see um, my face looking a little bit different um, in my body. I, I, I am working out. I started to do heavier weights um, and I stopped doing cardio that causes stress on my body, like HIIT. So I do more walking, cycling, rebounding, um, and I recently started doing the Stair Master, which I hate. Okay, going in with Born This Way. Very light, I do very light makeup. I used to do heavy, my husband doesn't really like it. Hmm. Okay, so the next question says, do you get lonely working online? So I will tell you this, I am an introvert. As much as you guys see me talking to y'all right now, Trust me when I tell you, this is a camera. I'm talking to y'all, but it's a camera. Like, this is nothing. I can do this all day long. Like, run it back, I got this, put me in front of the camera, let's go. But tell me to go to a social event, get dressed, do my makeup, and go talk to people. Girl, bye. Oh, get somebody else to do it. Get somebody else. I wanna stay home. You know, it's just, I am a homebody and I am an introvert. And so, do I get lonely? Lonely? No, I can't say that I get lonely, but sometimes I wish I had more people to talk to, but that feeling of wishing I had more people to talk to doesn't outweigh or never is heavier than I wanna give up my space. Like, no, 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 nothing is heavier than that. So it's like, it doesn't outweigh that so is it does the feeling come about mm-hmm mm-hmm but then when you tell me okay well then hire somebody and then have them come me see them every day like engage in a conversation every day oh no, that, that's okay i i am okay I, i'll be okay i'm not i'm not alone i'm not lonely i'm just i'm just i don't know but i'm not i'm okay that's what i tell myself so it is it's cool oh thank you and that's that. So I can't say that I am lonely, but I can tell you that I have moments, but I get over it real quick, real fast. Real bad, real bad, real bad. <laughs> okay, this is the Fenty Beauty um, Matchstick Espresso. Next question, how many locks do you have? When I started, I think I had 380, but I've combined a few and I have not counted. So I would say anywhere between 370 and 380. What's your favorite book in the Bible? That's a good question. At one point, it was the book of Ruth. Um, and now I would say probably Esther. Um, there's just so much symbolance. Oh, and then the Song of Solomon. Okay, oh wow, okay. So let me just give you, <laughs> More or less so, um, after I separated from my son's father, um, let me wet this, give me a second guys, hold on. Let me get this super wet. I'm gonna use this. Um, after I separated from my son's father, I left a um, very toxic, bad relationship. And when I left, one of the things, he was very manipulative, um, and he said, no one will ever want you because you have a kid. Like if you leave, no one's gonna want you, you have a kid. Um, and I believed him. I wholeheartedly, it's, even though I didn't think I believed him, it stuck. It was in my underlying DNA. And so I, I can sit back and say, I approached a lot of situation and relationships and stuff in my head already thinking of like self-sabotage because no one's gonna want me anyway, right? Well, um, before I even gave birth, cause I went back and forth, like, do I wanna do this? Do I wanna keep this child knowing that I'm probably gonna leave this man? Um, cause it had already went bad. And I kept getting this, when I would open my Bible and pray like, God, you no, know, speak to me, tell me what to do. I, would, I kept getting the Song of Solomon. Like, that was just the Bible um, book that I kept getting. And so I felt as if that was God's way of telling me, you are going, like even if you have this baby, someone will wholeheartedly love you one day. 
like you will find your Boaz, like he will find you, whatever, but your time will come, you know, this just wasn't it. And so you have to hold on to that. In my Bible, I write the dates down of whenever I open, whenever I read my Bible, I like to write the dates. So when I get that scripture again, or that book of the Bible again, I like to sit back like, oh, what was I doing at that time when I was reading? What was I going through in 2022, September 3rd, right? And so when you go through my Bible for the Song of Solomon, I have, it, it's like every couple of months, same scripture for years, years. And I forget the day, I don't wanna lie. But more or less, so I got it right again. I got it right before I ended up meeting my husband, which I had wrote a, a letter to God um, a year before and I met him one year and seven, one year and one week later after I wrote that letter, which was pretty much saying like, God, I've, I'm calling on you because you told me your word will not return void. And I believe that you spoke that song to Solomon to my spirit. Like that is my word that is for me. And where, ha what happened? What's going on? And a year and seven, one year, one week, I met him. Um, so first it would be Song of Solomon, at least at one point it definitely was. It kept me through, it kept me going. Um, and then from there, I would say it went on to be um, Esther. And I love Esther because there's so much semblance, oh man, that's too much, in her life to mine and just the things that she went through, how she had to be strong, stand on her faith. I really love it. Um, yeah, that would be that would be my current fave. But for a long time, it was Song of Solomon. Okay, I think I got this nose as contoured as it's gonna be. This is my version of contour. Okay. <laughs> so after being single, after being a single mom for years. I was a single mom for 10 years. How was it dating with your son and moving in with the guy? Wow, that's a great question. Oh my God, it was so hard. It was so hard. Um, I had never exposed my son to me really dating like that. Like when I was dating someone, they didn't come around or meet him. There was this one guy that, that did come around and meet him. So we were off and on for a while and, but they just, and he had kids that he had adopted or whatnot. And um, the kids just knew that we were friends. Like they never saw me sleep in the bed with him. I'm trying to think like we were very, we didn't kiss and do any of those things. Like we didn't kiss and do any of those things. We weren't in a bed together. Like we were very strategic with making sure the kids saw us as like, we were courting, but we were very PG, not even PG 13, right? And so uh, that worked. And so this would have technically been this guy or my husband now is technically now the first guy that I'm introducing to my son as my boyfriend. So that was that was the hardest thing. He was 10 years old and I'm talking about, OK, you know, I have a boyfriend. Um, I think what made it worse is because he goes with his dad in the summer and um, he came back to me having a boyfriend. Like he didn't leave with me having one, but he came back like, wait, what? So I've been gone for about 75 days and this is what happened? Yeah, buddy, I, um, see what happened was, so that was kind of hard. Um, introducing him to um, a man, his eyebrows messed all the way up. Um, he didn't act out too much. He definitely had some days where he acted out. I will tell you that now. He just wanted attention. And so one of the things I had to do was reassure him that his love wasn't being replaced. Like his, I still needed his love and he could still have my love. I think that was probably the biggest thing is reassuring him that I wasn't giving his love away and that I still needed his love, that the love I was going to be getting from this man was never going to be able to replace the love that he gives me. I hope that was helpful. Um, 
And so that was that. So they met, they introduced each other. And that was, like I said, that was easy. I mean, it wasn't easy, but we got all, we got through it. He acted out a little bit, but not too much. Um, and told him he was my boyfriend. Before he proposed to me, he actually asked my son and told my son. So that was nice. Yeah, if I could go back and tell you anything, I wish I would have dated earlier. I wish I had exposed my son to at least me dating. Like I'm getting dressed saying, hey, I'm going on a date. Wish I had done that. I think it would have been more welcomed if I had done that, um, but I didn't. So I wish I would have done that. Maybe about age seven or eight, just having, just to start see me go out and go on dates, right? Um, that would be the biggest thing. Um, and then when, when my husband moved in with me, I was very big on, I didn't want to play house. And so I told him, I was like, I don't want to play house. It was COVID though. So I understood his lease was up and everything. Um, but he moved in, we moved in together. Should I say, Oh, I'm missing something. We moved in. So he, well, he moved in because of COVID. And so my son understood that like, he's only here because COVID, right? COVID his lease, you know, and the lease was going to be up, but he understood COVID. He was 10 at the time. Well, maybe even 11 now at this point. Yeah, 11. So he understood that he was here because of COVID and that people were cohabitating because of COVID. So that definitely helped us for that. And then um, my lease was gonna be up and he was like, um, you know, why don't we get an apartment together? And I was just like, look, I play about a lot of things, but I don't wanna play house. I just don't wanna do that. And so, if this is something that you can see yourself doing forever, like long term, like you're, if you're trying to really get married, which we had talked about before, I will do that. But don't have me out here getting this apartment and that's not what you want because I don't want to play house and I don't think that's fair to my son to expose him to something like that. Um, and so we moved in um, October, I think like 30th or was it November 30th? It had to be in October. I don't know. It could have been October 30th or November 30th. No, it was October because I cooked Thanksgiving dinner for the first time. So it was October 30th. And I cooked Thanksgiving dinner November and then December 12th, he proposed. So not, you know, I don't know. He, but, it's so, but I don't, okay. I don't want you guys to think like, oh, the conversation is what made him propose because I did find out that he had the ring since July. So he was just waiting for the right time. Um, we did go meet his parents in July and that's kind of, I think when he told his parents or whatnot, I think. And yeah, he was serious. Like he, the, the, this is December of 2021. And am I, is it 2021 or 2020? Good Lord. Oh, sorry. This is December of 2020. And I will tell you this, um, he took me to look at rings a year before that. So December of the previous year, he was like, I want to just take you out and let's look at rings. And we looked at rings and, um, he was like, I just want to know how much like I'm going to be spending. Because one thing I did tell him is if you're going to buy me a ring, you can't buy it on credit. Like, I don't want any debt from a ring. Like if you're going to buy the ring, save up, buy the ring, do not charge my ring buy a cash or I don't want it that was something I did um, stand firm on and so he was like let's go look at rings we looked at them and I told him what I liked and I left it at that and so six months later he purchased the ring and then he proposed six months after he purchased the ring so that's where and then look and that's where we ended up you know starting a whole new life so this is what we have so far it's okay I don't know. I don't know. I'm a little, mm. um, let's get some lashes going. I think I need, or you know what? Let me get some shadow first. Hold on. Okay. Let's just get a little color in my eyes. I feel like everything's kind of blending together. Like I'm not seeing the highlights. I really need to get a lighter concealer because it just doesn't stand out enough. I feel a little definition with that. If TikTok shuts down, what will you do? That's a great question. I think that's a fair question too. It's gonna go in with this liquid blush. 
been using this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's blend her out. Um, well, I will tell you this. I am only interested in doing jobs that I want to do. I think that's where I'm at right now. Unless I have to, again, unless my family needs me to, I will do anything, but that's the biggest thing. And so, you know, I've been on Instagram. I've done that before. Okay, lights. Come on, son. Don't leave me here. What are you doing? I don't want to do something I don't want to do unless I have to do it for my family, but I just don't. So with that being said, because I've done Instagram before, I've done so many other things online. I've had one-on-one -on -one clients. You guys want me to start a membership, you know? I'm just at that point where like, I'm thinking right now, I'll just keep doing YouTube because that's what I truly enjoy. If I could do this every day, life would be perfect. But I can't, I do have to make income because we all know that YouTube does not pay me like that. So I will definitely be doing YouTube for sure. Um, I don't know if I'll go over to another platform or if I'll just stick with the membership and see if between the membership and YouTube if I can make up the cost. That will be the first thing. The second thing is, uh, is I've always wanted a blog. This comes out so well. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. I've always wanted um, to have a blog. I've actually paid for a guy to do a blog for me last year and that's a whole nother conversation. But um, yeah, I would start my blog because I really want to do that. And honestly, my goal is to probably start it sooner than later just so I can do, even if I just do one blog a week, just so I can um, start to generate traffic because there's so many bloggers that I follow that make so much money. You know, it is a long game though, just like YouTube. And so I'm willing to write it out. So I would say those two would be my first. YouTube and then blogging will go in as my top. Now, if those don't generate income, like I need them to, I might take on one-on-one -on -one clients again. Um, that would be my last resort though. Do you still drive a Tesla and would you recommend it? So yes, I am currently still driving my 2001 Model Y with an extra third seat. I'm gonna tell you why I say it like that. So, would I still recommend it? Yes and no. Yes, because I love the car. No, because, or no, or things that I at least just say regret, or I don't know, remorse, I don't know, is that when I purchased the car, it was worth like 60 or $70,000. It was up maybe even 65,000. I think now the Ys are going for as low as 35,000. Of course, I do have it, things that I added onto the car, but yeah, I think it's dropped almost $20,000, if not $15,000 since I purchased it. And so that bothers me. It bothers me that the value has just decreased, that someone can get a newer version of my car and spend $15,000 less than what I paid. Like, ugh, I feel stupid. I hate it. I do not like that. Um, and then I paid extra for that third row. That's not even a third row. Like my 14 year old can barely fit back there. Like he has to sit back there for no more than 30 minutes. That's it. 30 minutes, he's ready to get out. He's like, this is too much. I don't like it, let me out, it hurts, I'm uncomfortable. And so, I sit back, I, I think it was an extra $3,000 for the third row, or 2,000, I don't know. And it's just frustrating because I got the third row because we needed seven seats because, you know, we do wanna grow the family and we do have his parents come for weeks at time. And so, the fact that the third row is just trash, is just like, this is a joke. So now our cars will be paid off by 2027. 
And so at the same time, my son is graduating from high school. So we are going to give him one of our cars, most likely my husband's, because I don't want another car note. But whoever has to get a new car is going to have to get a seven seater. And that bothers me because I could have had a seven seater with my Y if it was a real freaking third row, but it's not. So the idea of just spending more money in another car note just irritates my soul. Um, so yeah, so I love it. I do still love the car. Um, I don't know if I would get an X because I want a true third row. Um, I want room, I want space. And so like, honestly, the I've never been inside a Defender, the, the Range Rover series, the Defenders, but they look amazing. They look like, like they're so spacious, um, but they're not EV. So I can tell you this, if I do change my car, it would still be an EV and it would have seven seats, real seven seats all seven like big spacious give me room boom 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 can't touch me because i'm so far away i got room that's what i want um are you guys going to have a baby i i hope so i mean do you want to talk to my uterus because <laughs> no but seriously yeah we're we're gonna start trying soon i'm gonna go in with this um one size here um on till dawn the travel size because we are traveling soon so you're probably thinking she put so much on this is my airport makeup like I'm about to pack my bag the next video I'm filming is all the things you need for Disney and then I'm gonna film pack my bags with me and then I'm going to film us going to the airport so like this is the makeup for the day and we have a red eye so after I'm done like after we fly and I sleep I'm hoping that this is still on when I wake up so you know but here she is what do you guys think very natural right like it just looks like skin at least in my mind it does I wish I could do these better like I don't ever get under my eyes the way I want to I think I need to learn how to do that where you don't see any freaking bags and it's lighter. That's the one thing I haven't mastered. So if you guys have any tips on that, really bringing out those light areas, like the T-zone underneath the eyes, a little bit underneath the contouring, I would love that because I don't know what concealer to use to do that. But here she is. Now, that is that. Let's do one last question before we wrap this up. What is your favorite thing about life right now? That's a great last question. We have so many more, it's crazy. Um, I will say this, my favorite thing about life right now is doing life on my own terms. Um, finally taking life slow, something I've never done. I've worked since I was 15. Um, I was homeless, not sure if you guys have been following me for a long time, but I was definitely homeless for a, a, a stint where I slept in my car. Um, I am a hustler, like that's all I know, it's just in me. And so to have my body kind of be in fight or flight mode all day, every day, I know why it's there. And that, this is how I was raised, right? And so to finally be at a point in my life where I can take things slow, that's nice. I am truly enjoying that. And I know that that's a privilege, that's a blessing. That is something that I could never say thank you enough to God for. Um, as much as I would love for it to be slower. <laughs> um, but the fact that I can even have, the fact that I'm sitting here on a weekday doing my makeup on screen for you guys to post online, like, what? And while I'm doing this, before I lie to y'all, <laughs> how much money have I made? Let's see, just so I'm clear, look, let's see. And while I'm doing all of this, I've made a hundred and, one of my accounts say 60 from TikTok shop. Let me check this one before I lie to you. I've made $175 and it's three o'clock in the afternoon. So it's like, I know by the end of the day, I'm probably gonna hit 250 or $300 made. And all I did was wake up, shower, do my makeup and record videos all day long for you guys. Like. That is a blessing. So my favorite highlight right now is living life on my terms. I just, 
I can't put a price on that. You know, I get to take life as slow as I want. And that to me is something that I'm truly enjoying. Well, I thank you guys so much. I hope that you guys like this video. It's one of the longest videos we have on this channel to date. <laughs> I don't know if you made it to the end, drop me a number three. If you put a three in the comments, I'ma know you made it to the end. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this helps those new people that did join us um, this past month feel more welcomed. I feel, hopefully you feel like you know me better. Hopefully you're able to see my personality more because you know, when I'm teaching and you guys how to do TikTok shop, how to get your bag, I don't really show much of my personality. So just the idea of me being able to show you guys that and just welcome you guys in and just say thank you. Um, it's something that I really wanted to do. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you watched to the end and I hope I was able to answer a lot of your questions. I will see you guys later um, on Wednesday. We will have a wellness Wednesday and that's going to be all of the things that you should be packing in your bag for Disney World. And then on Friday, we'll have a freestyle Friday and most likely that video is going to be a pack with me video as most of the content going forward for the next couple of weeks will be just Disney content since that's what I'm about to be filming for the next seven days. I thank you guys. You guys have an amazing day. God bless you. May you be blessed this week. May you be fruitful. May you multiply, but most importantly, I pray that you go about your days and you are intentional with having a blessed day.